Good day. This is Ward Harriman, AE6TY. I'm here to introduce you to the latest version, which is 16.1. And I'm particularly interested in making sure the typical user understands what he might experience when trying to run the new version. As a preamble to this, I would like to point out that Larry Benko W0QE has done a large number of very informative SimSmith videos. He's available on the YouTube. And there's a few places where his videos might be considered outdated. In particular, the area that it might be of concern is in the preferences section. And he discusses how you might want to set your wheel tuning and shift control amplifiers. This area has been reworked in 16.1. If you've played with this, you will have to go and replay with this. It's not a big change, but I wanted to warn you that maybe something won't work quite the same as before if you've modified those particular preferences. Now the first thing the typical user will notice when he fires up 16.1 is that the file extension name up here has now changed to .ssx. This stands for SimSmith Extended. And this file is incompatible with previous versions of SimSmith. You can, of course, read in older versions of SimSmith.ss files. They work pretty much as expected unless you were a more advanced user. The two areas where you might run into trouble are in Roos blocks and in F blocks. If you read the release notes, the specifics are spelled out, but I thought I would show you what might happen. Let me read in an older file. Here's an old file I loaded in. And I loaded in and get this message. This message basically says, SimSmith detected something which might be a problem and is going to ask you if it should try to do the translation. Most of the time you should just say, just this load. You are, of course, free to say not this load or not this session and hand edit them. But very often the translation just works. So I'm going to say just this load. And it did, in fact, do the translation. In this case, the translation really was only the adding of these two underscores down here. Again, if you're a ruse block or an F block user, you want to go read the documentation concerning the naming of components and parameters. The second thing you might notice in bringing up 16.1 is the introduction of this left arrow to margin. This allows you to make that particular element narrow, and it's used when there's really nothing interesting going on inside that block, and you want to save screen space. Some of the circuits have become quite large, in particular the use of the isolation block takes up large amounts of memory or large amounts of screen, and they don't really end, they don't really add anything to the uh, circuit description, and so you just don't want to use space showing them. If you want to know what the parameters are, you can, of course, just hover over them. Remember, there's this hover line up here, and you can see what the values are, and of course, you could just pop it open, take a look at the value, and pop it closed again. Now the third thing you might notice if you're a little more advanced is when you bring up a dialog, for example, the voltage dialog here, the 
the format of this dialogue has changed. Previous versions of SimSmith auto-scaled the size of the text to fit the block available. SimSmith no longer auto-sizes this particular text, and that's because I wanted to provide for very long programs here. So if you were to type in, I'm going to hit return, if you were to type in a large program here, you'll see a scroll bar appear over here on the right. And that allows you to have programs which are significantly larger than the space available. Sometimes you have a high resolution screen and this fixed font size gets to be too small. That's why SimSmith used to scale to space available. Uh, in order to compensate for that, you're, you can go down here and increase or decrease the font size by clicking on these plus and minus signs. And that allows you to set the size of the text to fit your screen and your vision. Now, another thing you may notice while doing this is that error messages come up in a different place. If I were to type something here which is syntactically wrong, the error messages now pop up up here most of the time. Occasionally they don't. Occasionally I have to use the old warning screen which used to pop up down here. But in general, when you're typing something, error messages will come up up here and if you correct it, the error message goes away. Now, another area that got to be a problem with higher resolution screens and with more complex designs was in editing the roof block. This particular default size on a high resolution screen just got to be too small for people to manipulate. And the same would have happened here had I not changed this particular dialogue down here. And again, you can, of course, increase or decrease the size of this font. And if you make it too big, the scroll bar will appear. So this works just like any other text dialogue. And sometimes the lettering on this is too small, and you'll want to be able to zoom this in, so I added the ability to zoom around at the cursor location using an arrow, which I will type now. Or you can use the wheel as before. So that's about all you should see as a typical user bringing up 16.1 for the first time. If you're a user of F blocks or Roos blocks or some of the more sophisticated plotting, you want to watch the follow on video, which will be available soon. It's 16.1 for the advanced user, and it's in editing right now. I figured I would like to release 16 for the general use and let the vast majority of people take advantage of the improved performance and start to see some of the benefits that 16.1 will bring everyone. This is Word Harriman, AE6TY, thanking you for watching and thanks for using SimSmith.